spectra proof or spectrograph. Uh, I have one spectrograph uh, behind me with a Canon camera, and now it is in the slit uh, mode. Uh, George now uh, will take my seat in order to All right. prepare. Uh, let us just one minute to switch the devices on. I will uh, help with the presentation and uh, I think you're going to be excited of how easy it is to work with spectrums. So let's get going. Thank you. We are here. So I'm sharing the first screen with you all. So you clearly can see the slit now in our window. Okay, here is kind of full screen. Uh, here is the uh, the emission from a sodium spectral lamp. You can see that uh, these lines are a double, just a moment to, to better focus, okay? And now by increasing uh, the, the, the brightness, you can see the rest uh, of the lines. emitted lines by sodium. Uh, most of the sodium lines uh, are doubled. Uh, in the, uh, the, the yellow line, uh, are uh, two, it's our double, double lines uh, with six angstroms difference in their wavelength. Πάμε και σε μια μεγέθυνση, Γιώργο. Τι θα share screen μάλλον πριν να κάνεις. Stop και ξανά share. I'm sharing the new screen. It's on magnification so we can see better the results. So this is it. Okay, just a moment to better focus the spectrograph. We are here. Now you can see in, in the magnification in high magnification the emission lines from sodium uh, that uh, sodium uh, emits also out of uh, yellow lines also emits in a green area uh, and uh, also in the blue uh, part area of the spectrum. Of yeah, course, please. the principal line is the yellow uh, color. Okay, please to share screen. Uh, I need 10 seconds in order to transform the, spe the slit spectrograph into a fiber spectrograph. This will be done by put uh, on the spectrograph an additional uh, device, an additional optomechanical system, and that uh, is uh, very easy. So now it must be visible. Just a moment. So we'll magnify this now. So we see it clearly. Okay, that is. I, uh, just a moment to decrease the, uh, the brightness of the system. Okay, now I can focus better. So we are here. Ε, περπάτησε πάλι τη γραμμή από εδώ. Για όμως μιας κάτσε λίγο μια στιγμή να αρχίσω τη φωτεινότητα. Ωραία. Και περπάτησε πάλι τη γραμμή. So. So you can see also that sodium has uh, a dub line in the uh, green area and uh, some lines also double in the turquoise and the blue part of the spectrum. Okay. Uh, this was uh, for the beginning of our uh, presentation regarding the spectral analysis of the solar corona uh, during the 10 uh, solar eclipses. All right, uh, Aristide, can you tell uh, about uh, the resolution of the, the system, yes. some uh, uh, details? Yes, uh, uh, this uh, system uh, has a resolution with a specific camera about 0.4 angstroms per pixels. Per pixel. Uh, we use uh, a very good quality uh, grating with uh, uh, 600 uh, lines per millimeter. 
and uh, some uh, very special optics uh, that uh, I'm testing in uh, Icarus uh, Optics Laboratory. So uh, we can now go away with our presentation. All right, so let's get going. Take your seat. Let me do it. So let's take the presentation mode. So, so we should now see uh, the presentation. Christian, uh, you confirm this? I can stop, stop, sir. Just a moment. Share the screen again. Share screen. It's here. Share. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, we, I will present uh, uh, the solar corona spectrum analysis during the total sol uh, 10 total solar eclipses uh, that I was observed. Uh, I was uh, a member uh, of uh, um, Solar Astronomers Eclipse Hunters uh, on, uh, with uh, Jay in, in team of Jay Pasakov, Professor Jay Pasakov um, from the uh, US. Um, I'm observed, my first eclipse was, uh, I was observed from, um, I observed from uh, Greece, Castello Resort, 2006. Um, before, of course, starting the, the, the presentation, I'm working uh, and uh, my occupation uh, in uh, optics laboratory and, uh, and uh, special uh, optomechanical constructions for astronomy, uh, industry, industry, and uh, research. Uh, here is some uh, representative images. Uh, me, I'm using uh, my lathe. Uh, here is an optics laboratory of Aristotle University making some, some measurements uh, with some instruments. Uh, here is my personal solar observatory using my silostat. Uh, it's a, I have a, a special room for solar observation uh, using heliostat. And um, uh, you can see the solar light that enters uh, in this uh, solar room. Uh, of course, I'm using uh, my spectrographs in order to capture the spectra from comets, uh, stars, and nebula, etc. Um, <clears throat> and here is some uh, of my special instruments uh, constructions. Uh, it's a, here is a large spectrograph about uh, 2.5 meters long uh, with a, a silostat and a large grating. Um, and uh, here is my Icarus spectrograph adapted on microscope in order to capture uh, the spectra from the world of microscopy. And uh, also here is another system for solar corona uh, measuring, uh, temperature measuring. Um, <clears throat> uh, my uh, 10 eclipses was uh, started from Castellorizo, Greece, 2006. Next was in Novosibirsk, Russia, 2008. Tianhua Pink Shanghai, China, 2009, Easter Island, Chile, 2010, Cairns, Australia, 2011, Mkongo, Gabon, uh, 2013, Svalbard, Norway, 2015, Salem, Oregon, USA, 2017, Cerro Tololo Indian American Observatory in Atacama Desert, Chile, 2019, and my last was the Eclipse Flight Sunrise 2021. Uh, it was a flight close to uh, Antarctica. It was in, on last December 4th. Um, here is, now I will, I will present you uh, the, uh, what I have constructed, used, and the uh, results from the spectral analysis of the solar corona during these 10 eclipses. 
Uh, here we are with my partner and friend, uh, George okay. Pistikoudis. And here is our telescopes, one Takahashi and one Vixen. Uh, so Takahashi plus Vixen is on uh, uh, equal to Takahashi. Vixen. Yeah. <laughs> um, for this uh, eclipse, uh, it was my first eclipse and my first collaboration with Professor J. Pasapo. Uh, I, construct, uh, I constructed uh, special Leo filters with bifringent uh, crystals uh, of uh, quartz. You can see uh, the crystal quartz here uh, is uh, bifringent material and also the use of Polaroids by uh, adding something very specific, specific thicknesses of uh, the quartz crystals, uh, we can uh, cut uh, the, uh, all the spectrum and uh, to tune this system in only one color. Um, by the help of the temperature, the heating, by heating these crystals uh, and uh, with specific thickness from all the green area part of the spectrum, I can uh, take only one color this color, which is the specific color of iron 14. Iron 14 uh, is a, an ionized uh, iron that has, uh, has lost uh, uh, 13 electrons. Uh, in order to lose uh, 13 electrons, needs a high temperature about uh, 2 million kelvins. This temperature exists in the solar uh, corona. By this, this system called Leo filter, uh, I can photograph the solar corona in the line of ionized iron 14. Uh, here is some images from uh, me and my friend uh, George Pistikoudis from, uh, from Castellorizo. You can see the solar corona. Here is bipolar. Uh, you can see uh, the, uh, the structure of the solar corona around the, so the lunar limb, and some close up here, the thickness of the chromosphere. The solar chromosphere uh, mostly is in red color because of the hydrogen um, emission line, which is uh, red. Here is the percentage of covering of the uh, lunar disk on the sun disk. Of course, I change the position, uh, the position of the two of these two disks, uh, in order to understand how uh, small is the, the covered the covered percentage of the uh, lunar disk on the sun disk. So, by using this Leo filter, um, I found uh, very uh, specific structures on the solar corona with temperature about 0, uh, two, uh, 2 0.0 milli uh, kelvins. Uh, uh, of course, these images are processed, so you can see the dark areas uh, represent uh, temperatures about 2 million uh, kelvins. Um, uh, during this totality, 2006, I used my first uh, Icarus spectrograph and uh, I captured the, the chromospheric and the corona spectrum with emission lines. Uh, you, and, uh, you can see uh, the, the two different spectra. Here is on, on, on right is the coronal spectra. On left uh, is the chromospheric emission uh, lines. You can see uh, H alpha hydrogen, uh, hydrogen, uh, hydrogen line. H alpha, H B, uh, helium, most uh, and iron, of course. Uh, mostly, the, uh, the the solar chromosphere consists by hydrogen, helium, uh, sodium, calcium, and uh, iron. Mostly, here you can see uh, the two coronal emission lines. The one is iron fourteen, and also the iron uh, ten. Uh, in the image, you can see that here is a blurred image green that emits iron 14, and poorly you can see the emission of iron 10 in the uh, red area. In the next eclipse, 
in Siberia, 2008, uh, who was on the Taras of uh, Butkir Institute of Nuclear Phys Physics. Here is George uh, and our uh, telescope for several observations, uh, our equipment, and the final uh, team. Thanasis Georgiou, John Siradakis, Tilemakos Athanasiadis, Thanasius Nitsios, the Russian uh, student. Our guy, our guy, observation yes. expert. Spiros Kanuras and uh, Michalis uh, Siradakis and George Pistipoudis. Um, on, uh, on, on left, you can see my, one of my, my heliostats with my spec, one of my spectrographs in order to capture the solar uh, corona emission lines. Uh, of course, before totality, you can see on, the, on my hand the projected uh, spectrum on my hand. Uh, here uh, was uh, the, the great adaptation of the spectrograph. And uh, some images from George Pistipoudis uh, during uh, be, uh, some uh, several seconds before totality and during uh, totality. Um, this is one of uh, the spectra with Icarus slitless spectrograph used for the solar corona capturing. You can see the prominent emission lines of hydrogen, of helium, hydro hydrogen eta beta, eta gamma, and uh, the two lines of calcium. Also, uh, you can see iron 10 uh, emission line but poorly and difficult to detect it, iron 14. Why will show, I will, uh, will tell you uh, in the next uh, uh, images. Uh, here is a, a full sequence, a characteristic sequence of the solar spectrum. Here is with absorption lines from Hofer absorption lines before totality. Here is uh, just on the totality with analyzed uh, the light of the diamond ring, diamond ring, the emission lines uh, during totality and uh, after totality, also the second uh, diamond uh, ring analyzed in the very bright horizontal continuum line. Um, here is the close up of the specific lines of the corona spectrum during uh, 2008. Uh, hydrogen, you can see a strong prominence in hydrogen also in helium, but not in sodium. Uh, also no prominence in magnesium iron, neutral iron uh, li emission lines. And you can see uh, ionized, one time ionized uh, calcium H and K emission lines. You can see here that uh, iron 10 Okay, it, it's, it's, it's good visible, but iron-14 is uh, difficult to detect. Uh, this means that in the solar corona during 2008 eclipse, uh, it's, uh, there is absence of high temperature of the solar corona. As we, uh, we, uh, we said before, iron-14 emits, needs temperature about 2 million Kelvin in order to emit the characteristic green line, green color, and iron 10 needs about temperature and temperatures about 1 milli Kelvin in order to emit the characteristic red. That means the sun was in eco mode, let's say so, and that was yes. not enough energy to have yes. a strong evidence of iron yes. 14. Um, uh, I will show you that in the next, next eclipses, this uh, equation ratio will change. Okay. Um, so uh, by comparing the spectrum from Castellorius 2006 and the spectrum from uh, Siberia 2008, uh, we, can, we can detect that iron 14 exists, uh, high temperature exists in Castellorius 2006, but it has, uh, it's poorly detected in uh, uh, 2008 okay. eclipse. Uh, this means uh, that the temperature of the solar corona uh, during 2008, it's lower than the temperature of the solar corona during 2006. By comparing this, uh, changing the temperature, drop, the drop down of the temperature, uh, you can see that um, 2008 had uh, about uh, 265 spotless 
dates, days, um, relative to other uh, other dates. Uh, you can see on the left that 2008 uh, was the, the second uh, year with the uh, highest number of spotless uh, days. The first was, was the first uh, year was 1913. Uh, uh, about 100 uh, years before. Uh, this observation uh, was published in Solar Physics by uh, A. Bulgaris, Athanasiadis, Siradakis, and J. Pasakov. Uh, was published in Solar Physics on 2010 and presents the correlation of the corona temperature with the number of uh, sunspots. Uh, Next eclipse was in China, 2009, in uh, Shanghai, Tianhuan Ping. Uh, our team, I, I think it's now it's uh, uh, more extended persons. Uh, Thalia Trajanou, Tilemachos Athanasiadis, Spiros Kanuras, Tom Economou, me, Thanasis Georgiou, Sia Metalinou, and John Siradakis. Uh, of course, we had uh, perfect uh, travel. Uh, with a uh, lot of uh, visits in um, uh, some uh, ancient uh, China uh, museums, and of course, uh, Shanghai. Uh, uh, also, a concert on the Taras of Tianhua Ping uh, one day before the eclipse. Uh, also, I'm playing violin in uh, 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 city, city of Thessaloniki, on the orchestra of the city of Thessaloniki. Um, uh, here is uh, our equ equipment. Uh, you can see a, a heavy spectrograph with a Takahashi telescope and a heliostat in order to scan the solar corona during totality. Um, you can see from the sequence that uh, Iron 10 exists in his position in the spectrum, but there is totally absence, absence of iron-14. Um, here is the uh, very high resolution spectrograph. You can see the emission of iron-10, but here it should be iron-14. Uh, and no emission uh, from iron-14 uh, because the temperature during 2009, uh, it was a cold corona mm -hmm. and uh, very, a low solar minimum. Uh, <clears throat> uh, next eclipse in, it was in 2010 in Easter Island, Chile, uh, with uh, me, John Seradakis, and Tom uh, Economo, also, also a good friend, uh, student Jay Pasak of Muzulu. Uh, here is also uh, our equipment. Uh, we had two optical bands. Okay, it's not bench; it's a table for uh, <laughs> for sun uh, for sleeping. Okay, but uh, Easter Island it's uh, a, a, an island with difficult to travel there. So all these uh, uh, it was difficult to find them in order to construct the optical bench. Finally, because I had the problems in order to find to find optical bench. I'm constructing a optical bench, and now I'm traveling with personal mind optical bench in order to avoid these problems. Um, uh, Easter Island has a very strange uh, weather, uh, raining uh, after 10 minutes uh, sunshine with uh, uh, with um, rainbow. rainbow. Uh, uh, here we are meeting Pasakov. Solar astronomer from India, uh, Professor Yagdev Singh and John Siradakis. And here is one day before the eclipse that was raining about 28 hours, hours continuously. So the possibility to not uh, observe this eclipse was very high. But finally, we observed the eclipse under perfect weather conditions. Um, you can see the, the, the spectra from um, the, the solar corona of uh, total solar eclipse 2010. You can see 
iron, the emission of iron 10, also iron 14. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, eclipse of 2009, before, one year before, uh, it was during a solar minimum, but uh, the sun started to walking uh, to the next solar maximum that was about 2012-2013. So in this uh, eclipse, we detected both of lines of the characteristic coronal emission lines. Uh, here is the analysis of the solar spectrum uh, from uh, total solar eclipse 2010 from Mr. Island. Um, in this um, spectra, spectrum, we have subtracted the continuum. Um, the solar corona emits, uh, emits a coronal emission lines in characteristic ionized uh, uh, elements, but also scatters, scatters the continuum from the photosphere. For our research, the continuum of the, the scattered, the scattered continuum of the photosphere is acts as a noise in our uh, observations. So uh, we subtracted this noise uh, in order to have the clear emission spectrum from chromosphere and the corona as is iron 14, as we said before, uh, iron 10, also nickel 13, uh, and probably it's not, it was not uh, sure, argon 10. Uh, of course, we also detected some position, uh, uh, but it's not sure for, uh, for it's not for sure, of uh, uh, calcium 15. Uh, we'll present you uh, in the next eclipses what's going with this uh, very, uh, I, very rare element, very rare emission of this element. Um, um, the, this, um, this spectral analysis with the continuum subtraction was also uh, published in Solar Physics on 2012, uh, Bulgaris, Gaitadzis, Siradakis, Pasakov, and uh, Economo. In, uh, now, the next eclipse was in Australia, 2000, 2012. Uh, Australia is a beautiful uh, place with uh, very amazing uh, icons, uh, also a dangerous place because uh, this crocodile has had a length about 3.5 meters. <laughs> um, here is uh, our team also increased in number, uh, our team. I can show you uh, our equipment uh, in order use, to use for the solar eclipse of uh, 2012, Silostat spectrograph, another Silostat special lens, a WO filter. We will we'll discuss about this in the next eclipse. And our results. Mm. Uh, this, uh, unfortunately, we had the bad weather, uh, so no results from. Uh, uh, Australia eclipse. We, have, we hope to have uh, better weather in the next one in Australia, so yes, we yes. are take our events. <laughs> yes, probably the weather in uh, eclipse in Australia in two, 2023 will be in good uh, conditions because uh, was, we, the eclipse path will be in the uh, west, uh, northwest Australia. It's uh, desert, so there is possibility, there is no possibility to to, to be with cloud, the sun, the, the sky with clouds. Uh, and this is me mm. here. <laughs> um, the next eclipse was the hybridic, hybridic solar eclipse. Hybridic means that um, the solar eclipse usually starts as annual eclipse because the moon is on the, on the limit to, uh, to cover all of the sun or to not cover all of the sun. Uh, so after, after one uh, area and after this area, uh, the, the moon approaches the Earth. So the annular eclipse be transformed into a total eclipse. Uh, so uh, here was total eclipse uh, in Gabon. It's a central west 
um, Africa. Uh, here is the, the airplane that we fly, we, fl we flew, we flew in, uh, in, uh, to Libreville uh, above Sahara uh, Desert. Um, by uh, driving inside, inside the jungle, uh, we pass the equator at zero degrees, zero minutes, and zero uh, seconds. seconds. Uh, in order to travel at, uh, in our observing uh, place. Uh, here is elephants, uh, a very uh, a nice color uh, lizard, and this butt was my room. But on the eclipse butt. <laughs> it, it was the eclipse butt, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and um, before totality, we have uh, uh, time in order to visit Libreville and the U.S. Embassy. Uh, Jay Pasakov uh, gave a lecture in the uh, U.S. Embassy in Libreville. Here is Jay Pasakov, uh, Mike Kedrianakis, and the solar astronomer uh, Voito uh, Ruzin, a very good uh, friend of me. Um, uh, of course, uh, the eclipse was only one minute, uh, so it, it was impossible to use uh, uh, large equipment uh, for uh, a lot of uh, uh, data capturing. So I used only my spectrograph and one small telescope. Uh, you can see here that uh, the iron 10 uh, was uh, uh, poorly okay. detected, but iron 14 was uh, clear evident. Uh, that means the areas around the solar corona uh, had uh, temperature, uh, temperatures around 2 million Kelvin instead of 1 million Kelvin of the previous solar corona temperature. Uh, <clears throat> you can see here, it's very known, the uh, modest, modest minimum. Um, during uh, this era, the sun was very quiet, no sunspots, no flares. It was a very uh, quiet uh, sun. Uh, and after this uh, minimum, extended minimum, called Monders minimum, the sun started uh, the 11th year's uh, cycle from one minimum or from one maximum to the other maximum. Um, uh, this correlation, probably if we had the spectrograph here, uh, there is possibility to, uh, the, in the spectra to not detect it iron 10. Uh, of course, it's, it's sure that, that iron 14 was uh, not detected in this uh, hypothetical spectra, but uh, also the solar corona should be below 1 million uh, Kelvin, so iron, for, iron 10 also was not emit, mm -hmm. difficult to emit. Uh, uh, during uh, this extending solar minimum. Uh, here is the shadow of the, uh, of the moon uh, crossing the Africa. And after the eclipse observation, we're waiting uh, our bus in order to travel in uh, the airport. And here is one of my favorite um, solar eclipses. Uh, Total solar eclipse 2015 in Svalbard, 1,300 1, kilometers before uh, North Pole. Um, you, can, uh, you can see that the eclipse path, it was um, uh, cross, crossed the... What's the one on the Nisiai plan of the Mars? The islands. I don't remember the islands. The small islands. Faroe, yeah, it's here. It's Faroe Islands. Faroe, in yeah. Svalbard, it's uh, here. Um, Svalbard, it's very beautiful place, but uh, the cold is <laughs> um, uh, There are many people that are living uh, in, in these places. Uh, there are pe other people that are hunting uh, seals. And here is the seed vault. Is it? Isn't it? Uh, it's in a mere apotheki of the sporos. Okay, some uh, place where you can get your seeds to yes. pre prevent yes. them from uh, getting from uh, destruction. Uh, yeah. 
or uh, it's it's like uh, mm. bibli bibliotech with uh, seeds. Exactly, a database of seeds. Yes, yes. Uh, here, John Siradakis. It was my mentor for many years. Uh, unfortunately, uh, he passed away two years, about two years before. Uh, but uh, we had a very good cooperation with uh, Professor Don, John Siradakis. Here it was our uh, equipment and the spectrograph with uh, Silostat. Some uh, images um, of the solar uh, corona here is about uh, uh, seven seconds before totality. Here is two seconds before totality and the totality uh, begins. You can see very bright and high altitude prominence in H alpha hydrogen, and also a very active um, loop here. Uh, it's better here as a close up. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, in this uh, in this um, loop, very active loop, uh, we found uh, very high temperature. I will present you before in the next present, uh, images. Here is the eclipse sequence uh, of the spectra. Uh, I have also a video in order to, to show you how it changed the emission spectra uh, during uh, the time of totality. Also, you can see the chromospheric emission lines of hydrogen, helium, eta beta, also helium, eta gamma, uh, the iron 14 and iron 10. Uh, of course, iron 10 is um, um, the, the, this eclipse was uh, uh, this eclipse occurred just after the solar maximum, so the temperature of the solar corona was high. Uh, means that um, uh, the intensities in uh, iron 14 is uh, higher than iron 10. Uh, I will try to show you. Can I work, Stop sharing okay. to share the video screen. Pause the video to share the screen. Exactly. Let's check from the beginning, perhaps. From the Just start. a spite in uh, spite in Othoni. Mikro Neto, you're not correcting me. Was it a match? Okay. Exactly. Now it's yeah, yeah. Okay. Visible. And now we'll play, we'll uh, start by the beginning. Now the solar, uh, the, the, the moon uh, transits uh, over the solar disk, and you can see the changing in the coronal emission lines, starting by the east. It's visible the eastern, uh, the eastern uh, uh, hemisphere of the sun of the corona, and uh, after. Uh, some seconds you can see that this image uh, is mirrored because the emission are exist in the western solar hemisphere. Okay, stop share. Okay, πάμε στο presentation το οποίο είναι share εδώ και είναι το αυτό έτσι. Ναι. Ωραία. Okay. And some close-ups of the solar corona spectra. You can see here we are in the line of helium. Also the double line of sodium. Sodium line exist in the low chromosphere. Uh, it's uh, too impossible, too difficult to, to detect uh, a sodium line in, the, uh, in high altitude of the solar chromosphere. 
Also, uh, we have not observed prominences in the line of sodium. Also, no any observation of prominence in the line of uh, magnesium. Uh, usually, the prominence uh, are visible in the line of hydrogen, all in, all in the lines of hydrogen, and also of helium. Here, you can see the very active loop on the uh, western uh, limb. And by applying uh, the continuum subtraction in our spectra by uh, uh, Professor Christophorus Moratidis, uh, we detected uh, very rare, rare lines such as, uh, firstly, uh, here is the distribution of iron 14 in the spectra. Uh, also, uh, we found the nickel 13, nickel 13. Um, and also we, we detect four spots. Uh, two spots are exist uh, on uh, one spot exists in the uh, in the east uh, hemisphere, eastern limb, and the second was uh, the active loop that we detect this line and this line. Also, this spot and this spot that uh, concern the existence of calcium 15. Calcium 15 is an ionized calcium 14 times. Calcium has lost 14 electrons. In order to, uh, to lose um, 14 electrons, needs an extremely very high temperature, uh, around 3.5 uh, millikelvin. Of course, this temperature, uh, it's difficult to exist in around solar corona, but exist only by special active reasons, usually uh, in the, the regions, uh, regions that uh, exist very active solar uh, sunspots. Very active. So uh, we found this loop in calcium 15 that uh, calcium 15 emits in two lines. The one is uh, 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 5,694, and sure. the second line is uh, 500. 5,446 uh, extremes. Of course, the second line is very rare and difficult to observe because it's not principal line of uh, calcium 15. Um, we found uh, that uh, our Icarus spectrograph is very sensitive in the continuum distribution. You can see above the solar corona uh, during uh, total solar eclipse 2015. And uh, instead, in, in, on the contrary, the solar corona continuum uh, background of 2008. You can see that the continuum, uh, the analyzed uh, corona continuum uh, is, um, is broken with horizontal dark and bright strip continuum lines instead of uh, uh, eclipse of 2008 that it was very um, uh, it's continuous without this without this discontinuities yeah okay and um, uh, we found that um, the the broken solar uh, corona continuum uh, concern uh, very active reasons that alternates uh, the brightness of the corona uh, as results of the different degree of scattered light, photospheric light inside the solar corona. Okay, it's difficult. Uh, will be probably will be published this uh, observation in uh, next uh, uh, month. Of course. The story of the of Svalbard was not finished in the solar eclipse because uh, a few hours after the, after totality, uh, the the party in the sky started. Yeah. Uh, the party was, of course, the observation of polar aurora. Um, 
you can see, I can show you um, the, the video yeah. uh, that I was made from, um, uh, from uh, pictures, taking pictures at the moment. Yes, you have to share it. Then after you go. Okay. Uh, we have a problem here. Houston have a problem. That's not uh, the video you. Okay, have. but I will show you. Yeah, anyway. Uh, what's what's it, what is going with the creation of the aurora, polar aurora? I'm at the door. Was to share the screen. Sto video. Let's see. Okay, share. Okay. Here is the sun, and uh, in some place, a stronger flare uh, occurs. Uh, in the uh, the explosion of this solar flare uh, sends very dense and uh, hot, uh, dense and hot uh, particles uh, called um, uh, uh, solar wind. Uh, and uh, there is possibility to meet uh, the Earth, but uh, the Earth has a magnetic field, uh, so um uh, uh, all, all this uh, very hot and uh, uh, active particles uh, travel to the poles um, but uh, by this collision with uh, high height velocity about 3000 kilometers per second the collision with uh, elements of the atmosphere mostly oxygen and uh, nitrogen uh, produce lights the lights of the yeah, solar through of the aurora, yes. Through it's, it, yes, it's uh, uh, it's um, I think it's not ionization is uh, is uh, ex excitation. Excitation, exactly. Okay, uh, uh, stop share. Just a moment. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Now we can continue uh, right. our uh, presentation. Here is one of my images of the. Uh, Solar aurora, um, and this the next eclipse. It was in uh, USA, 2015. We had two teams. The one was in Salem, Oregon, and the second, uh, Carbondale, Illinois. Um, here is a, 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 a difficult process uh, in order to detect the boundary. Uh, the, of the of the plume shapes, um, it's not uh, of course it's not uh, it's different process than Brock Miller's uh, mm -hmm. images. Um, the eclipse the eclipse team in Salem, uh, Oregon, uh, with Jay Pasakov. It was Jay Pasakov was uh, in the uh, about uh, some meters uh, after us, uh, observing place. John Seradakis. Uh, Anna Vasiliadou, um, uh, and uh, Nikos. Nikos? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't okay. know. In, in, in. Oh, okay. <laughs> and um, uh, some a close up from our equipment. This was my optical bench in order to avoid uh, the problem of the bench uh, traveling around. Uh, the world, you can see the uh, heliostat telescope and the special, my special WO filter that can capture the solar corona in iron 14 line and iron 10 line, and also two spectrographs and one LEO filter in Nita mm -hmm. H alpha. Um, this, this instrument was designed uh, by me in order to measure the corona temperature in, uh, during total solar eclipses. Of course, it's heavy equipment and uh, needs some days in order to uh, correctly set up. Uh, so I'm using only when the, when the, uh, the team is uh, with um, a lot of uh, person, with a large number of persons. Here is uh, uh, two images of the WO filter. You can see the distribution um, of iron 14 and the same area, the different distribution of iron 10. Uh, 
uh, of course, you can see it's visible the different distribution. That means different temperatures on the same place. Uh, uh, the, 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 the temperatures of the, in the solar corona are mixed. It's not something uh, constant uh, to here and uh, something other here. In this area, um, the temperature are mixed and mostly following the magnetic uh, field directions. Uh, here is um, um, one of our spectra. You can see the high intensity of iron 14 and the up, mostly absence of iron uh, 10. Mm -hmm. uh, after the construction, uh, collaboration with uh, uh, mathematical mathematician Christophorus Moratidis, we uh, out of uh, uh, the very faint line of Michelio 13, uh, we detected the unbelievable that can be can, could exist. Argon 10. Here is a very faint line of our our 10. Argon 10 was detected for first time from 2006. Um, um, it's very, very, very faint line, and argon then mostly emits around or below one million uh, Kelvin. Uh, so, in the solar corona of 2017, uh, there are some areas with uh, uh, corona temperature below one million uh, Kelvin. Um, probably the argon 10 presence in the solar corona means uh, that the sun lo is located close or on the solar uh, minimum. Um, a special uh, uh, moment for me was the a construction or a spectrograph, a little spectrograph construction for NASA. Um, in order to fly with NASA aircraft G3, uh, here you can see that the window was uh, changed in order to be optical uh, flat and uh, spectroscopically uh, without absorptions, also spectroscopically flat. And um, Thomas Turbuchen, the administrator for the science mission, the directorate at NASA, uh, uses and uh, presents Icarus uh, spectrograph in uh, to the NASA, NASA, TV. NASA TV. Yes. Um, and uh, closing to the, to the two last uh, total solar eclipses was in a, a total solar eclipse of 2019. In Cero, I was observed this eclipse from Cerro Tololo in the American Observatory. In Chile, uh, uh, my collaboration with Professor Jay Pasavo continues uh, up to date, uh, and co concerning the spectral analysis of the solar uh, corona. Here is uh, the main observatory of Cerro Tololo um, Inter-American uh, uh, Observatory. Here is the main dam. Uh, of course, I had with me three spectrographs in order to analyze the different dispersions of the solar corona uh, and the small telescope that I, uh, that I was photographed uh, captured the solar corona before, during and after totality. You can see the very rare di uh, double diamond uh, ring uh, because uh, probably the specific position, observation position from uh, Cerro Tololo uh, uh, was um, in the moon there was two um, uh, valleys with uh, high depth. Mm -hmm. So you can see the last uh, solar photospheric light at the last uh, moment before uh, the total covering by the lunar uh, disk. Uh, this image also was published in uh, Sky and Telescope. Uh, you can see the bright lines uh, of uh, the bright line of helium, magnesium, very uh, uh, other lines, mostly from calcium and iron. 
neutral iron and calcium uh, neutral also and the double lines of um, uh, of um, sodium also it's difficult to detect here the iron 14 and easy to detect iron 10, 10. so the temperature was uh, the temperature of the corona was dro uh, dropped down uh, because <clears throat> the eclipse of 2019 was uh, in the deep solar minimum um, I had the second collaboration in order to and I <coughs> constructed a very special spec spectrograph near infrared solar corona uh, spectrograph um, in order to use by Professor Glenn Snyder uh, University of Arizona in order to capture the solar corona spectrum in near infrared area. Uh, of course, this spectrograph works uh, uh, cannot work uh, on the ground because the strong absorption lines of uh, vapor water and uh, oxygen lines in the near infrared area. So um, I had the grant, uh, I asked a grant flight from a GN Airlines, is a very good Greek <coughs> company, in order to test the spectrograph um, um, in, uh, in a high altitude. Here is uh, the, the data from uh, a, uh, with, with a GN uh, Airlines flight. I can show you here is um, the spectrograph, the solar spectrum in near infrared uh, area uh, in altitude five meters above uh, the sea level. The, sea level. Uh, the same spectrograph and the sp same exposure time in altitude 9.2 kilometers. Almost 10 kilometers. 10, uh, about 10 kilometers above the, the sea level. Um, you can see that uh, uh, the Fraunhofer line have, de have decreased because the, uh, the, the low density existence of, uh, um, of uh, water, uh, vapor water, also oxygen. And the last spectrum is with, the, of course, the same instrument uh, during the flight inside the dense clouds. Uh, so, um, <coughs> The uh, absorption lines, water absorption lines, are ve is very strong, and uh, of course uh, in all of the band of the near infrared uh, spectrum. Uh, uh, here is Professor Glenn Snyder. I had I have very good uh, cooperation with Glenn, and my spectrograph, uh, near infrared spectrograph, uh, that was uh, flew with E flight 2019, Max. Why Max? Because the totality during this flight, the duration of totality was about eight minutes plus 25 seconds. Uh, because the airplane uh, uh, travels inside the, 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 shadow. The, the shadow, so the time is about uh, the double uh, relative to the on ground uh, observation. Uh, because of the specific flight, uh, plan flight, the sun uh, relative to the perpendicular line of the window was not <coughs> was not uh, stable. So I constructed um, um, how can I say an, um, a silo stat with motors that followed the the solar corona path uh, during eight minutes of totality. Yeah. But if you want a long eclipse, you just have to take a plane. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and the last eclipse was in uh, two months before. It was in um, um, yeah. the near Antarctica. You can see the shadow of the Earth, uh, the shadow, sorry, of uh, the moon on the Earth. Uh, the photograph is from a satellite, of course. Um, also a second test flight because uh, I was used uh, three spectrographs and so I was constructed uh, some um, special bases in order to adapt it on the airplane uh, chairs. Uh, so a special optical bench was adapted on the airplane chairs to two, 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 two optical bends in order 
to adapt my spectrographs uh, on these events. Uh, a granted uh, flight from Aegean Airlines was also uh, uh, was granted, uh, was granted by, uh, Aegean. by Aegean yeah. in order to test the, uh, my spectrographs and, of course, the optical benches. You can see here uh, it's uh, two visual, two, two spectrum in two spectra in the visual area. Uh, the first, uh, the first uh, spectrum uh, was uh, captured above the clouds, about uh, ten in ten, uh, ten kilometers uh, above the sea level, and uh, the second spectrum uh, it was captured on ground. Uh, mostly, the Fraunhofer absorption lines, mostly from the chromos solar chromosphere, such as uh, uh, H alpha sodium. Uh, magnesium, HB, uh, remain constant, but you can see in this area and this area, the uh, additional absorption lines on the spectra, on the ground spectra, spectrum, uh, that uh, exist these lines because there are absorption from uh, water vapor absorption lines, uh, high humidity, uh, because the flight was in November and the, we had the high humidity, bad weather uh, before, the, uh, the, before the flight. Uh, my collaboration in this eclipse was also with uh, Tom Economou, University of Chicago. And also very long time coll collaboration yes. with NASA. Yeah? Yes. Uh, it's a very good uh, friend, a very good person. Um, I have uh, our collaborate collaborations with uh, Tom Economou. Uh, it's uh, something very personal uh, for me. Yeah. Um, here is how it was the aeroplane uh, that was uh, that we uh, used in order <laughs> to fly above the Antarctica during total solar eclipse. Um, I can tell you that. Uh, uh, NASA, no, sorry, General Airlines granted this flight because firstly it was announced that uh, the eclipse flight above Antarctica will be used uh, a, a, an airplane from Airbus 321. Mm -hmm. So all the system, the optical benches and the adaptations uh, were set, were adjusted in the airplane of Aegea that was too similar that the airplane of the Antarctica flight. Uh, but uh, for uh, some reasons, uh, one week before the totality, the airplane was changed from Airbus 321 into a Boeing Dreamliner 787. Uh, this means that the setup was started by the beginning in order to adjust the optical benches for the, the specific new conditions <laughs> condition yeah. in the new airplane. <coughs> uh, finally, we found the, the time in order to, to set up this uh, system. You can see here the two optical benches with the spectrographs uh, that used during totality. Uh, and a, a wide field <laughs> photograph, you can see the lunar shadow uh, that the airplane was uh, uh, flying inside the shadow. In, in the reality, the shadow came to us. Came to us, uh, and we have, uh, I think, good data in order to uh, to process them. Um, we found uh, emission lines of iron fourteen, also are iron ten, and now we are sure that we detect one um, um, one area of calcium fifteen. Also, the two lines of calcium uh, 15. Uh, of course, after the eclipse, I had the presentation of antikythera mechanism inside during the flight after the, uh, the totality. Uh, here is my spectrograph. Here are my spectrographs and also my functional model of antikythera mechanism. Um, uh, I am the chief of the team the frame project team, the functional reconstruction of a dikithera mechanism. Uh, my, me, with my team, we constructed a functional model of a dikithera mechanism uh, that we presented uh, in, uh, in the eclipse flight after totality. You can see that the moon sphere here is black. 
also the golden sphere sun, aims to the sun in the center located in the earth and in this in this setup there is a possibility to occur a solar eclipse calculated by the antikythera mechanism you can see the back page of the antikythera mechanism here is the saros helix uh, you can see that uh, in uh, in uh, some of 223 cells there are some symbols in greek letters such as sigma means selene and eta means helios sun moon and sun moon and sun uh, when the pointer aims in this area which is in this specific area uh, say uh, the, the, the mechanism calculates and informs you that in this month will occur a lunar eclipse and also a solar eclipse also in the antikythera mechanism uh, predict the hours that occurred this eclipse this symbol like anchor means aura hour and the letter theta means ninth hour so in this month the eclipse uh, a lunar eclipse and solar eclipse will be occurred during the ninth hour um, with my team we find evidence that the antikythera mechanism can be used for the present era and uh, we are sure that uh, could predict the eclipse of 2021 and of course and the next eclipse of in 2020 that is the uh, knowledge of, from the greeks about eclipses sun and moon goes a long way back yeah? yes yes and not 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 also uh, greeks but also egyptians and babylonians yeah i think it's uh, the time <laughs> yeah, to give it back to, to, give it back to Christian. We are stop sharing and perhaps Christian, you are 